Um, up next from, uh, from Thomas Carr College, Austin Deppler. Murder. There we go, with one word I have gained all of your attention. Certain words trigger our ears to prick up. These words can also cause an emotional reaction and a need for information. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Austin Deppler from Thomas Carr College and my topic this evening is we hear what we want to hear. But are we really choosing what we are listening to? Since the beginning of hierarchies and class amongst peoples, the average person has been under the jurisdiction of a leader. Whether they were elected, born in noble blood, or just, very convincing. Still today, the use of propaganda and other imagery is quite present in our papers and news bulletins. From very young, our generation has sat in front of the idiot box, picking up tons of handy and useless information. But where is all this information sorted? Media outlets, including television, Newspapers and the radio rely on advertising, good writers and presenters, etc., but government influence overall. After all, Jeff Shaw is on the front of everyone's minds. No matter how we hear it, the government is always in the headlines or the recent news. And this isn't just on Drive with Tom Elliott. So, do we have absolute freedom in the news we want to hear? Or is the news sorted through and the best bits make up our evening stories? No matter how we hear it, the news will always start with a negative story. Woman raped on Gold Coast bus. AFL star in drug scandal. Armed robber holds up a petrol station in Footscray. They give us the cliffhangers to make us watch their version of the news. Although in some cases, it can be the way the reporter says, Canberra. But as long as the story is negative, people will want to watch it. We don't want to hear about fuzzy bunnies that have just found a home in Keelor. Although we don't like to admit it, we love to watch the blood and guts and gore of the news. As I said earlier, murder, our ears prick up, and if something happens in our local area, we almost run to hear if we recognise even the street. Now in Australia, our news is sourced through three families, Packer, Murdoch and Fairfax, who funnily enough were all major benefactors to the Australian Liberal Party. Now, through the, their ownership of a number of media outlets and the number of dollars they put in politicians' back pockets, they have a major influence of what goes on in Parliament. Same goes for mining magnates such as Gina Reinhardt and MP Clive Palmer. I'm sure fairness for all Australians is not his only reason for being there. Nonetheless, why are these silver spooners influencing what goes on in the House of our representatives? In 1901, the Australian Federal Parliament commenced based on a two-party system, Labor or Liberal. Up until very recently, we have either chosen one party or the other. Although now we can change to one of the minor parties, who would most likely give their preferences to a major party anyway, we are still voting for either one leader or the other. Millions of people will swear that they did not vote for Tony Abbott or the Liberal Party in last year's federal election. Although, as most of us know, governments get voted out and not in. So in the eyes of the voters, we can vote for whoever we want to, but we really only have two options, left or right. According to a media credibility survey, the ABC is the most accurate and unbiased news broadcaster in the country. Now we know that after the federal budget goes through, the ABC's funding will be cut substantially, which the last time this happened was in 1996, just after the Liberals gained power. It may surprise you to know that during his term as Prime Minister, John Howard forbid any of his party members to discuss anything with the ABC's journalists on or off TV. Clearly, the Liberals don't like the attitude given from this particular broadcaster. But hang on, wasn't the ABC the most accurate and reliable news broadcaster in the country? Clearly, they don't like the way the ABC puts it, how it is. On more of a global scale, our Australian TV is ruled by American television programs. Sorry, home and away, but I'd much rather watch Star Trek any day. We are raised on this since we are little children. In my case, I've watched The Simpsons for ages, and only until very recently I've learned that, in short, I could pass the American citizenship test. Now, on the surface, this is a comedy program aimed at 10 or 20-year-olds. 
Through open and hidden facts in the program, I've picked bits and pieces of factual information, excluding the trivial information about the characters. Now, I know they didn't really dig for oil in Teddy Roosevelt's head, but I remembered another American president on Mount Rushmore. Our ears are the gateway to our brain, and we may not know it, but we are being slowly brainwashed by other cultures. To sum up, we have choices in what we want to hear, but do we have complete freedom, like the Americans always dream of? Or are we just another number on an electoral roll or ratings chart? As long as we listen inside the box and don't extend our ears too far, our opinions won't be heard. To our leaders, we are just another voter. To our media, we are just another listener. Now in the car on the way here this evening, did you hear what you wanted on the news? Or did you hear what they wanted you to hear? Thank you.